Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror TV series named Resident Evil, Season 1, Episode 1 to 8. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The story begins in the year 2036. 14 years have passed since the world's destruction, leaving less than 300 million people on Earth, and the number of virus infected zombies has reached 6 billion. Jade is one of the few survivors. Over the years, she has been dedicated to researching the evolution of the zombie virus, even leaving her family behind and traveling across the ocean to the zombie-infested city of London. After spraying herself with a potion to cover her body smell, Jay begins her zombie research once again. She cuts the skin of a rabbit and leaves it in an open space, hiding nearby and waiting for the zombies to arrive. It doesn't take long for the zombies hidden in the buildings to become restless, drawn by the scent of blood. All the zombies detect the rabbit and pounce on it. Surprisingly, the rabbit speeds up and escapes, leaving Jade disappointed. Through nearly a year of observation, she has found that these zombies act solely on instinct, without any higher brain functions. As Jade prepares to leave, she accidentally cuts her arm on an iron gate. Sensing trouble, she immediately runs away. The horde of zombies detects her presence and chases after her smelly hormones. The zombies are faster than she expected, and she is soon tackled to the ground. Jade kicks off the entangling zombies and quickly rolls to press a switch protruding from the ground. Iron pillars by the roadside immediately spray scorching flames, separating the zombies from Jade within a circle. Soon, a red powder is sprayed, extinguishing the fire and silencing the zombies. This was a life-saving measure Jade had set up for her temporary residence, and she did not expect it to be useful so soon. However, the ground suddenly begins to shake. Sensing something, Jade immediately runs. The next moment, a gigantic insect monster bursts out of the ground. Jade recognizes it as an insect infected with the T-virus, a much more violent existence than ordinary zombies. She is no match for it and is knocked unconscious. Fortunately, three survivors suddenly appear with guns. After a fierce barrage of gunfire, the gigantic insect falls dead to the ground. When Jade wakes up again, she finds herself in a tin house. It turns out that the man who killed the monster insect brought her here. This is a scavenger camp, where everyone relies on scavenging and recycling abandoned parts to sell to dealers. Jade insists on leaving, but the man tells her that it's not as simple as just walking away. The man then throws a flare, which illuminates the night sky and reveals countless zombies hidden in the darkness, surrounding the entire camp. The residents usually rely on helicopters to get in and out. So Jay has to abandon her plan to leave on her own. The man then states that humans will eventually go extinct. However, Jade disagrees, believing that viruses are always evolving, and if the virus weakens, humans and zombies could coexist. This has been her motivation for observing zombies all these years. The man then says something that raises Jade's suspicions. He has seen the tattoo on her arm, a unique mark of those who have lived in Raccoon City. At that moment, the sound of a helicopter fills the sky. The man suddenly changes his attitude, saying that the Umbrella Corporation is coming. Over the years, the Umbrella Corporation has been offering rewards for Raccoon City residents. After discovering Jade's identity, the man reports her, hoping to receive a bounty. As several helicopters land, a group of armed guards emerge, led by their head named Gunman. When he sees Jade, his face lights up with surprise and delight. He casually shoots the man and orders his soldiers to open fire on the other scavengers, initiating an unwarranted massacre. Jade doesn't sit idly by and takes advantage of the chaos to escape the shooting zone. However, when the scavengers in the camp are almost wiped out, she finds herself cornered on a balcony. Gunman speaks up, urging Jade to go to the Umbrella Corporation, as her sister is waiting for her. Upon hearing this, Jade leaps towards the camp exit, preferring to face the hordes of zombies, rather than meet her sister. She lands on a tin shed, which cushions her fall and prevents injury. But dealing with the swarm of zombies won't be as easy. Jade gets up and runs in the opposite direction, with the soldiers on the roof providing cover fire, allowing her to take refuge in a glass room. It's clear that the Umbrella Corporation doesn't want her dead. Just then, a vehicle charges out of the camp, driven by a surviving scavenger. Jade knows this is her only chance to escape, so she dashes into the crowd of zombies, fending them off while yelling for the driver to stop. 
After joining up with the vehicle, Jade jumps on, and the scavenger floors the accelerator, smashing through the zombie horde and creating a bloody path. The two manage to escape the scavenger camp. On the way, childhood memories of Jade and her sister flood her mind. Time rewinds to three months before the apocalypse in 2022. Jade's father is the chief engineer of the Umbrella Corporation. Due to work requirements, he is transferred to a newly built artificial town in Raccoon City. Jade and her twin sister, Billy, are unhappy about the move, but have to follow their father and adapt to their new lives. For some reason, their father, Albert, draws a vial of blood from them every week. The sisters become accustomed to this routine, but they are unaware of the reason behind it. Unbeknownst to them, their father extracts their blood to inject himself. Recently, he developed a drug called the Joy Pill for the Umbrella Corporation, intended to treat depression. The management is very interested in the drug and eager to market it even before it's fully perfected. Albert is very worried about this, as an accident happened a few years ago when an unperfected drug caused people to go mad and they had to be killed. Although the incident was suppressed and the outside world remained ignorant, Albert has never forgotten it. One day at noon, Billy comes to the company looking for her father. She sees someone taking a live rabbit to the elevator leading to the basement. Billy is an extreme vegetarian and is very worried that the rabbit she saw during the day has been taken for animal experimentation. The two sisters discuss the situation and secretly take their father's access card and phone, planning to investigate the Umbrella Corporation. If animal experiments are really being conducted, Billy vows to expose the issue online. The sisters arrived at the company entrance and opened the door using their father's phone. Billy remembered that the rabbit had been taken to the fourth basement level. As soon as they stepped out of the elevator, they saw various animals locked in glass cages. Billy became energetic and took out her phone to take pictures as evidence. Jay, on the other hand, wasn't interested and noticed the computer on the table. She tried her father's username and password, and to her surprise, it worked. There was a video stored on the computer showing several guards shooting ordinary people, leaving Jade in shock. At that moment, a low whimpering sound came from behind a metal door in the office corner, labeled Ultimate Experiment of the Joy Pill. Billy guessed that there might be an animal locked inside, so she tried using her father's access card. The metal door opened, and when she saw what was inside, she stepped back in fear. An enormous, monstrous-looking dog came out, appearing agitated. It charged at the two on all fours, and they sprinted away, barely escaping the lab in time. However, the ferocious dog hadn't given up and continued to ram against the metal door. In no time, the dog broke through and continued its pursuit. The sisters hid under a table, shivering in fear, but were soon discovered by the dog. They bolted towards the company entrance, only to realize that the door required phone confirmation to open. The dog caught up and lunged, clamping its jaws around Billy's shoulder. Seeing this, Jade grabbed a fire extinguisher and viciously smashed it onto the dog's head. The dog finally collapsed on the floor, motionless. Jade let out a sigh of relief and hurriedly dragged her sister onto a chair to rest. Billy was seriously injured, with two rows of teeth marks on her shoulder, still bleeding. Just then, their father Albert appeared, looking anxious upon seeing Billy's wounds. He urged Jade to take Billy home immediately and insisted that they not go to the hospital. He decided to stay and clean up the mess, inserting a USB drive into the main computer. All the computer screens started glitching. Then he went to the dog's side and smeared blood on his face. Soon, the company's security team arrived, followed by the branch manager, Evelyn. Albert explained that he was working overtime when they suddenly experienced a cyber attack. All surveillance footage and access records had disappeared. The electronic lock holding the dog had also failed and it took efforts to kill it. His flawless explanation managed to cover up the incident, but the consequences were far from over. Albert knew that the dog that bit Billy was no ordinary animal, but a product of high-risk experiments. So he secretly examined Billy's wounds and discovered that they were already festering, presumably infected with a terrifying virus. Back to the present, with the help of the sole surviving scavenger, Jade managed to escape the horde of zombies and evade capture by the Umbrella Corporation. The situation was dire, and she didn't have time to get off the roof of the car. Jade noticed several metal pipes suspended in midair and shouted for the driver to stop. The car stopped just before touching the pipes. Just then, several zombies jumped down from a wall. The driver fought back, but was quickly overwhelmed by the growing number of zombies. Jade was powerless to help. 
she can only break through the car's sunroof, climb inside, and step on the accelerator to escape the pursuing zombies. After a night of travel, Jade arrived at a humid city taken over by the Umbrella Corporation. Under the protection of weaponry and technology, the residents lived securely. Jade knew she was wanted by Umbrella, but had a compelling reason to sneak back to the city. Disguising herself, she arrived at the doorstep of a house, whose owner had helped her sneak in from her previous residence. Now, Jade wanted to reunite with her husband back home, and needed the house owner's help again. However, his wife said that he was away on a trip, and hadn't returned. Jade sensed something was off, and quietly opened the bathroom door, only to find the owner had turned into a zombie, immobilized by a pipe. Beside him, a bathtub contained numerous animal remains. It turns out that the woman was actually keeping her zombie husband. Perhaps this was their way of providing mutual support. When she learned that Jade wanted to smuggle herself to her hometown, the woman told her to give her husband's notebook from his pocket, which contained contacts of other smugglers. Jade armed herself and approached the zombie. She restrained him, retrieved the notebook. But the zombie broke free from his handcuffs, charging forward and pinning his wife underneath him. Jade impaled the zombie with an iron rod, but the woman expressed no gratitude, instead driving Jade away in anger. Now Jade had to find a boat captain who could get her across the sea. Following the information in the notebook, Jade obtained a ticket to cross the sea at night. The dock was already full of people waiting to be smuggled. As everyone prepared to board the ship, a few trucks arrived with drones and opened fire on the crowd. It turned out that the Umbrella Corporation had come to crack down on illegal smuggling, but their target was Jade. The dock was filled with screams of agony. During the escape, Jade saw a little boy left behind, rushed over, and held him behind in a metal shed. Before long, most of the smugglers at the dock were killed. Gunman ordered his men to search along the way and find Jade at all costs, not knowing that she was just hiding nearby. After that, the boy's parents arrived and were very grateful to Jade for saving their son. They were smugglers specializing in selling liquors. Now that the boat route was not an option, the couple knew of a tunnel that could cross the strait. Upon hearing this, Jade immediately drove the boy and his family to the tunnel entrance. The entrance was controlled by local forces, so Jade reluctantly handed over the car keys as a toll for passage. So they boarded a vehicle wrapped in iron nets. The atmosphere was tense, as everyone knew this journey would not be easy. When the vehicle reached the deepest part of the tunnel, the escorting guard warned everyone not to make any noise, as if afraid of some terrible presence. Just then, the persistent Umbrella Corporation appeared again. The loud alarm was triggered. The escorting guards sensed something was wrong as soon as they got out of the car. A long spike suddenly pierced the soldier's head, and everyone fought back. The smugglers hadn't even realized what was happening, when a humanoid monster suddenly broke in. Everyone scattered in terror, with long spikes emerging from the dark nets to harvest lives. Jay had a close encounter with the monster, and recognized it as the legendary liquor, which relied on sound to locate its prey. The last remaining guard led Jade and the boy's family into a maintenance tunnel nearby, that is said leading the exit. Just then, the little boy fell to the ground and couldn't get up. It turned out that he had been bitten by a zombie two days earlier. Jade told the mother to abandon the boy, but she refused. The impatient guard left them and ran off in the distance, only to return shortly after, crying out in fear. To their shock, it was a giant human face spider. In terror, Jade took the boy's family and sprinted away. Halfway through, they crawled through a small door, believing the giant spider couldn't catch up. However, it was just a small room, not suitable for long-term shelter. The boy's father picked up an iron pipe and announced that he would lure the spider away, while the others escaped in the opposite direction. However, the spider's enormous size didn't give the boy's father much time. Jade and the others were still targeted by the spider. At the last moment, Jade managed to pull the lever to open the gate, and they finally reached the tunnel exit. However, the little boy's situation grew worse, and it was estimated that he would turn into a zombie soon. His mother decided to stay behind and accompany her child during his last moments. With no other choice, Jade walked alone towards the tunnel exit. To Jade's surprise, as soon as she reached the surface, gunman from Umbrella appeared. It was unbelievable that he had also survived in the tunnel. Suddenly, gunshots rang out, and gunmen fell to the ground, shot. A large group of armed millions appeared and took everyone away. Surprisingly, gunman was so tough that he acted as if nothing had happened, even laughing in the prison vehicle. Meanwhile, Jade was panicking and observing the surroundings, feeling that these criminals were definitely not to be trifled with. 
The group soon entered a closed bunker. Although it was dark and damp, the interior space was immense. Jade saw dozens of zombies pushing something in a circle. There were also many survivors in cages on both sides. The leader here was a complete fanatic who didn't take Umbrella seriously at all. He firmly believed that the apocalypse was a gift from heaven to him, as he could use zombies as free labor to generate electricity for the entire fortress. Jade had been studying zombie behavior for years and wanted to know how the fanatic managed to do this. But she was sure that this apocalyptic disaster was not a gift from heaven, but a man-made catastrophe caused by Umbrella Corporation. The scene flashes back to 2022, three months before the apocalypse. Two sisters secretly went to their father's laboratory. The younger sister, Billy, was accidentally bitten by a ferocious dog. Her misfortune began at that moment. Her wound began to fester, and she became listless. Their father, Albert, instantly turned pale when he saw this, as he knew how dangerous the dog was. In order to develop new drugs, he had deliberately injected the dog with the T-virus, originally developed for the military. Despite knowing about the virus's danger, Albert couldn't let go and extracted Billy's blood for testing. He then injected the blood into a lab rat. Soon, the test subject became agitated and kept hitting the cage. When Albert returned to the lab, the infected rat had disappeared. After some effort, he caught the rat and carefully observed its blood, discovering that the virus was rapidly devouring its body cells. At this time, Jade also noticed something was wrong with her sister. She tried to search for related information online, but all external information in Raccoon City was blocked by Umbrella Corporation. Jade didn't give up and found a hacker named Simon at her school. As a reward, she offered her necklace for him to break through Umbrella Corporation's blockade. Simon was indeed extraordinary, as he quickly bypassed the blockade. Tons of negative news about the corporation popped up, with one revealing that someone had been bitten by an animal from Umbrella and had gone mad not long after. Jade grabbed the computer and tried to contact the author. Surprisingly, the man quickly responded with a video call. The man was an investigative journalist who had been secretly investigating Umbrella Corporation for years. He had once interviewed the wife of the man who had been bitten. Both husband and wife were employees of Umbrella Corporation. After being bitten, the man began to show a series of infection symptoms and became agitated 72 hours later, attacking others in a frenzy. After returning, Jade bypassed the network restrictions and found out about this experimental accident. In the end, everyone in the lab died. After learning of that, Jade grew concerned about her sister. At this point, Billy herself realized something was wrong. Her wound kept bleeding and couldn't heal, and bouts of nausea and vomiting followed. What's more, her once-beloved pet dog now resisted her, as if its master had changed. As her condition worsened, she fell into deep fear. However, little did she know that her accident would bring about a disaster to the entire world. Back to the present, the zombies were seen tirelessly pushing the wheel and generating electricity to illuminate the once dark bunker, bringing light to humans. Jade was puzzled as to why the thoughtless zombies would willingly do such hard labor. Just then, the zombies suddenly stopped moving, and the room's lights flickered due to insufficient power. The sound of a chainsaw echoed from a distance. Jade looked up to see a guard from the umbrella brought before the hooded man with the chainsaw. The hooded man chopped the guard into pieces. The scent of blood stirred up the zombies on the lower level, but the hooded man paid no attention, instead tossing the chopped up flesh into a dark cage containing a single zombie, clearly a unique existence. After eating its fill, the zombie suddenly let out a howl, and the previously motionless zombie laborers resumed pushing the wheel. Stunned, Jade wondered if the zombies had evolved social relationships. Beside her, Gunman got nervous, as the person just served his food had been his man. Perhaps he would be next. So he tried to escape, but no matter how hard he tried, the prison door wouldn't budge. Jade knew this was not the time to settle personal grievances, and swiftly rose to help. Together, they managed to pry open the iron door, just before the guards arrived. After taking down the guards, Gunman immediately released his men. The Texas Chainsaw Maniac was about to unleash his fury, when Gunman took him out with a single shot. Numerous weapons were stored in the cabinets on the wall, one for each of the Umbrella Guards. They began to fight back against the armed militants in the bunker. Unsatisfied, Gunman decided to up the stakes and opened all the cages holding the zombies. A chaotic three-way battle ensued, with each side struggling against the other. Gunman skillfully handled his gun and flexed his combat techniques with remarkable ease. However, Jade didn't participate in the battle. She had a more important mission, 
to find the zombie leader, who would be the perfect specimen for studying the evolution of the virus. She grabbed a fleeing guard and asked about the zombie leader's origin, who was accidentally discovered in the forest, and was referred to as the Zombie Queen. Suddenly, a burst of laughter echoed, and the Zombie Queen walked out with her followers. Jade seized the opportunity to lower the gate, isolating the Zombie Queen and her minions, and chopped at them with her chainsaw. The nearby zombies immediately fell into a frenzy. Jade picked up the Queen's head and hurried away, but the zombies behind her relentlessly pursued. She could only hide in a small room, which turned out to be a sealed space. Zombies kept pounding on the only exit, and Jade found herself in a desperate situation. She picked up a satellite phone and bid her final goodbye to her daughter. Then, she stood up, ready to battle the zombies at the door. Unexpectedly, the chainsaw malfunctioned, and she angrily threw it on the ground, spotting a box of hand grenades. So she pulled the pin from a grenade. However, it didn't explode immediately. As she approached to check, the grenade finally went off. Gazing at the scattered zombie remains, Jade staggered out the door, encountering Gunman, who was still fiercely fighting the zombies. The number of zombies in the bunker was overwhelming, and the two fought their way to a corner near the elevator shaft. Jade jumped on without hesitation, and Gunman followed. Unfortunately, he was too heavy for Jade to pull up, and he was dragged down by the zombies and swallowed by the horde. Once again, Jade narrowly escaped death. Just as Jade was preparing to leave, a deafening roar echoed in the sky, and intense light blinded her. To her surprise, the Umbrella Corporation guards reappeared. Jade was trapped and had nowhere to run. When the guard at the front removed his helmet, Jade revealed a shock. Her thoughts returned to the time before the outbreak of the T-Virus. Back then, she had bypassed the firewall on her computer and discovered that years earlier, an Umbrella Corporation employee had been bitten by an experimental animal, leading to frenzied violent behavior. The time between the incidents was only 72 hours. Her sister Billy was now showing the same symptoms, and she felt compelled to tell her the truth. Watching the countdown on her phone, there were just over three hours left before the symptoms would manifest. Meanwhile, Billy decided to attend a party hosted by her classmates. There, she forgot all her sorrows and enjoyed the vibrant life a young girl should have. However, the arrival of a man disrupted the party. He was the journalist who had communicated with Jade through video call earlier. He traveled a great distance here to investigate someone bitten by an experimental animal. Using GPS tracking, the journalist quickly located the Jade sisters. He understood the dangers of the T-virus infection better than anyone else. The old Raccoon City had been destroyed because of it years ago. To prevent the situation from spiraling out of control, the authorities had detonated a nuclear bomb, leveling the city contrary to the official story of a gas leak. Billy felt the need to talk to her father, Albert, which shocked the journalist, because he believed that Albert was supposed to have died in the nuclear explosion. But the two sisters believed the journalist was talking nonsense and didn't want to engage with him any further. They ran towards the abandoned building, but as soon as they reached the road, the journalist was surrounded by guards. It turned out that Umbrella Corporation had been aware of his investigation for years. In a secret interrogation room, Evelyn, the woman in charge of the Umbrella Corporation, questioned the journalist about his purpose for coming here. He didn't hide anything, stating that someone in the new Raccoon City had been bitten by an experimental dog and that it was imperative to prevent the tragedy from happening again. However, he didn't know who had been infected at this time. The Jade sisters watched helplessly as the journalist was taken away. They recklessly ran through the streets, with the 72-hour countdown to the onset of symptoms fast approaching. Billy could even feel her body trembling. Jade stared at the countdown, but when the timer reached zero, nothing happened to Billy. The sisters were overjoyed and tearful, believing the journalist to be a liar. However, Jade remained cautious, believing that their father might have known something. The two girls searched their house and found several unexpected items, a dog whistle in a cabinet and a work notebook under the bed. Unable to access it without a password, Jade thought of her hacker classmate, Simon. With his help, Jade successfully unlocked the computer and examined all its contents. An intriguing email required specific actions to be sent. Its content was shocking. If Albert suddenly died, Umbrella would abduct Jade and the sisters had to leave immediately. Albert had left a bag for them with a series of clues. Following the hints, the sisters found a hidden compartment under the piano containing a travel bag. Inside were some cash and two fake passports, specifically for their escape. This made the sisters even more suspicious, convinced that their father and the Umbrella Corporation were hiding a significant secret. 
Simon suggested that important information would typically be hidden in an even more concealed room. So the sisters started searching the walls, avoiding the surveillance cameras in their home. They discovered a hidden sensor switch behind a cabinet and tried using their fingerprints and faces, but there was no response. It seemed that only Albert himself could open it. Simon reminded them that there was likely an alternative way to activate the sensor. Jade remembered the dog whistle found earlier in the cabinet. She blew it and the family pet dog ran over. Jade picked it up and shook it from side to side, causing the sensor switch to change color. Then, a concealed secret door opened. Curious, the sisters entered the hidden corridor, only to discover it was a concealed lab, likely where Albert worked at home. In the cold storage, they found blood samples taken from themselves weekly. In a cabinet, there were many old videotapes, dated around the time of the destruction of old Raccoon City. Jay picked up a random tape and watched it, which showed Umbrella soldiers capturing a terrifying monster called Lisa Trevor, with chilling eyes on its back. Jade opened the work log on the computer, finding very detailed records of tests conducted after Billy was bitten, which made her uncomfortable. So Bill wanted to leave immediately. As they prepared to leave, they decided to take all the videotapes and even the computer tower. However, the moment they unplugged the computer, the lab's alarm sounded. With the countdown coming to an end, flames rose around the lab, burning all the equipment and materials. The sisters hid in the center, unharmed by the fire. Soon, the fire was extinguished by sprinklers, and the lab door opened again. Their father, Albert, entered with a gloomy face. The sisters backed away in fear, as Albert seemed like a different person and began to yell at them. Billy picked up a metal chair and hit Albert hard, causing him to lose consciousness. When Albert regained consciousness, he found himself tied to a chair, unable to move. He then explained that everything he had done was to protect his daughters. It turned out that Lisa from the video was a human subject injected with the T-virus. Billy was also infected but showed no symptoms because Albert had modified her genes during the embryonic stage. The sisters then learned that both of them were artificially cultivated. However, they couldn't let Umbrella know that Billy didn't get sick after being bitten. Jade remembered the journalist captured by Umbrella, who knew much about the situation. Albert became anxious and said they must go to the company to solve the problem immediately. Although the sisters were disturbed by the revelation of their origins, they chose to trust their father. Back to the present, having finally escaped from a bunker teeming with zombies, Jade encountered guards from the Umbrella Corporation. When the leader removed her helmet, Jade got shocked, as the person before her was none other than her twin sister, Billy. Jade was quickly taken into another bunker, with even the head of the zombie queen being confiscated. The reunion of the sisters was far from the joyful event they had imagined, as it was clear that their positions were now completely opposed. Billy was now a core figure working for the Umbrella Corporation, while Jade couldn't stand the company's wanton destruction of the world, and had chosen to join an underground research lab. After being scolded by her sister, Billy only said that she didn't want to be part of Umbrella, but had no choice. She then untied Jade and helped her remove the locator implanted in her arm. However, Jade did not forget her mission and went to the warehouse to retrieve the zombie queen's head, before running all the way to the coast. This was the meeting point with the underground lab, and seeing her like-minded colleagues again, Jade finally allowed herself to smile. After a brief checkup, she boarded a speedboat and quickly arrived at a cargo ship located in the deep sea area. It was unexpected that the so-called underground lab was based here. They preserved many pre-apocalyptic plant seeds and technologies, anticipating the arrival of a new world one day. Jade was finally reunited with her longed for family and completely relaxed, especially when lying in her own soft bed. Jade arrived at the lab early the next morning. She never forgot the zombie queen's specialty and wanted to thoroughly understand how it controlled the zombies. After tests, she discovered that zombie cells could secrete two special enzymes, but they were broken down upon contact with oxygen. A researcher reminded her that perhaps adding auxiliary components, such as the zombie queen saliva, could make the enzymes effective. However, this was merely a hypothesis, and confirming the auxiliary components would require extensive testing. The day passed, but there was still no progress. In frustration, Jade spat on the Petri dish, only to activate the Zombie Queen's special enzyme in the air. Jade and other researchers were overjoyed, but the following tests were crucial. They added the two separated enzymes to T-virus samples, and found that the virus repelled the red enzyme, while being compatible with the green one. 
Jade realized the red enzyme could keep zombies at bay, while the green one could mark enemies for zombies to hunt down. However, further experiments were needed to confirm their speculation. The researcher suggested waiting until the ship docked in two weeks, but Jade couldn't wait any longer. She remembered passing several abandoned ships during the day and suspected that there would be zombies there. Under the dim night light, Jade went alone on a speedboat to the ship's vicinity. After a search, she found a zombie that had sunk to the seabed and brought it back to the lab. Jade eagerly prepared for the test, but her daughter, Sarah, suddenly appeared. Jade told her to keep some distance, as they were about to witness a miracle. Having prepared a mixture of red and green enzymes, Jade sprayed herself with the red liquid that signified keeping away and pricked her finger with a needle. Approaching the zombie, she shook her bleeding arm, and the red enzyme indeed worked, as even the scent of blood couldn't make the zombie move. Sarah cheered, but accidentally agitated the zombie, which broke free from its restraints, pushed Jade aside, and chased after Sarah. The little girl ran to the deck, and the researcher was instantly tackled by the passing zombie. Although someone killed the zombie immediately, the researcher had already been sent to meet Jesus. Everyone glared at Jade for her unauthorized experiment, especially the deceased's husband, who wished he could shoot her. Just then, they heard the roar of engines in the distance, as several armed helicopters flew towards them. To their surprise, the Umbrella Corporation had tracked them down. Jade grew suspicious and checked the zombie queen's head, finding a tracking chip inside. It turns out she had fallen into her sister Billy's trap. Realizing she had caused another disaster, Jade was filled with regret. The husband tried to comfort her, saying they needed to focus on remedying the situation. However, Jade felt powerless at that moment. The Umbrella Corporation had forced the cargo ship to dock and invited the professor, the leader of the underground lab, to negotiate terms. Unexpectedly, they had also set up a temporary camp on the coast. There, the professor met the person in charge of Umbrella, Evelyn. She arrogantly declared that she would take over all the members and assets of the underground lab. However, the professor was not an easy target. He had been prepared since the beginning of the apocalypse. They had retained much video evidence of Umbrella's illegal research activities. If Evelyn dared to act recklessly, they would release these videos and make Umbrella a global enemy. After listening to this, Evelyn changed the conditions, stating that they only needed Jade to be handed over. Jade did not expect Umbrella would let go of everyone on the entire cargo ship. She was worried about her daughter Sarah's safety, so she urged her to leave the cargo ship if she had the chance. Jade had already prepared supplies for escape, just like her father Albert had done for her years ago. At this moment, the professor brought Umbrella's offer, and Jade readily agreed. As she was leaving, she instructed that as soon as they reached the shore, they should quickly start the cargo ship and leave the coastline, and also press the ultimate button, which must be a hidden trump card. Under escort, Jade soon arrived at Umbrella's temporary camp. To her surprise, as soon as she entered, she saw Evelyn dancing. This was completely different from her usual image. Then her sister Billy walked in. It turned out that all of Evelyn's actions were under her control. In other words, Billy was now the actual controller of the Umbrella Corporation. Jade showed a disdainful expression on her face, which irritated Billy. She immediately controlled Evelyn and ordered her to seize the underground lab's cargo ship. Enraged, Jade took out the green enzyme that attracted zombies and smashed it hard on the ground. As an invisible terror spread, the guards on the coastline sounded the alarm. Countless zombies rushed from all directions like a tide. In front of them, the well-equipped guards couldn't make any impact. It seemed that their annihilation was only a matter of time. Meanwhile, the underground lab's ultimate weapon was also ready to be unleashed. Billy forcefully pulled Jade's arm and walked out of the tent, her face full of horror as she stared at everything in front of her. Ironically, before the apocalypse, the two sisters had also held hands like this, relying on each other to face the impending crisis together. The scene flashes back to the time when the journalist, who knew about Billy being bitten by an experimental dog, was captured by the Umbrella Corporation. Their father knew that he couldn't let the reporter reveal the truth or Billy would become a priority target for Umbrella. Albert volunteered to use drugs to make the reporter confess the truth. In reality, this was just a ploy to cover up the fact that his daughter was bitten. Albert had no choice but to kill the reporter and had already thought of an excuse for his actions. At the time, he had only injected the reporter with a dose of a drug that would help with confession. However, Evelyn wasn't so easily fooled. She had Albert restrained and ordered an autopsy on the reporter. The death was revealed to be caused by the injected lethal dose. 
But Evelyn had no interest in knowing why Albert did this. She just wanted him to continue helping her develop new drugs. Albert had already severed ties with Umbrella and so refused her request. Evelyn didn't find this surprising, as she knew Albert too well and believed she had hundreds of ways to force him to comply. It turned out that more than a decade ago, Albert had invented a cloning technology. To improve work efficiency, he created several clones identical to himself. The real Albert was already dead, and the one serving Umbrella now was the first clone. When he was first created, he grew to look like a 20-year-old in just six months. The price of rapid maturation was that the cells in his body would rapidly break down at a certain age, and he would need to regularly take a special drug. Now, Evelyn had stopped supplying the drug to the clone Albert until he agreed to serve her. However, he was resistant, seemingly preferring death to submission. Evelyn had to change her tactics. She ordered her men to go to Albert's home and bring Jade and her sister Billy to the Umbrella Corporation. When the sisters saw their collapsed father, they became emotional. Evelyn removed her facade of kindness, having blood drawn from Jade, while revealing the identity of Albert's clone. Surprisingly, the drug needed to treat the clone's cellular defects was actually the blood of Jade and her sister. This was the reason why Albert drew blood from them every week. At first, the two girls didn't believe it, but when they saw their father inject Jade's blood into his body, they were dumbfounded. It turned out that all the previous protection they had received was just an excuse. The two girls angrily left the scene. Back to the present time, the Zalmis madly rushed towards the human base, and even well-equipped soldiers couldn't stop them. In just an instant, the entire plane was densely packed with zombies. They were like a pack of wolves hunting their prey, fearlessly attacking the camp's barrier. It turned out that just a few minutes ago, Jay had smashed a bottle of zombie-attracting potion. Unexpectedly, the potion's effect far exceeded expectations. Billy was the one behind the Umbrella Corporation, and she forcibly dragged Jade out of the tent, only to be stunned by the overwhelming number of zombies. It wouldn't be long before everyone would be finished. As the protective barrier was breached and the guarding soldiers dwindled, Billy angrily slapped Jade to the ground, then returned to the tent to retrieve the computer controlling the drones. She wasn't planning to sit idly by and wait for death, but chose to make the counterattack. Faced with the densely packed, surging wave of zombies, Billy calmly walked to the center with the imposing drones behind her. She slid her finger on the computer's control, and all the drones began to hover in the air. Dense bullets poured out like a torrential downpour, causing both the zombies on the ground and the Umbrella Corporation's guards to fall one after another. Billy became excited as the number of zombies was visibly decreasing. At this moment, she suddenly realized that Jade was missing. It turned out that just a few minutes ago, Jade had just woken up from unconsciousness. She killed the guard beside her and saw the underground lab's cargo ship slowly moving away from the pier. She knew this was her only hope of escape. She weaved through the zombie horde and quickly ran towards the pier. Fortunately, the zombie's target was only the Umbrella Corporation's camp, so they didn't hinder Jade in any way. Although the cargo ship was already some distance from the pier, Jade's husband saw his approaching wife. At the moment she leaped with all her might, he threw down a rope. Jade reached the deck of the cargo ship through the rope. The couple immediately ran to the control room to persuade the professor to release the ultimate weapon. Jade knew that after Billy wiped out the zombies, she would not let this cargo ship go. After much deliberation, professor finally agreed. Unexpectedly, activating the ultimate weapon required two people to insert keys simultaneously to pop up the switch button. Without hesitation, Jade pressed it. Surprisingly, the so-called ultimate weapon was a giant alligator infected with the T-virus. It had been chained to the bottom of the cargo ship until that moment. When the switch was pressed, the giant alligator finally awakened and the chains fell off. The now unleashed creature emitted a terrifying aura, resembling a rampaging Godzilla. Jade gazed at the coastline, guessing that Billy's chances of survival were slim. Their thoughts returned to the time before the apocalypse. Back then, the two sisters were as close as could be, together uncovering many little-known secrets. They never expected that their father, who had raised them for years, was actually a clone who needed their blood to survive. To make matters worse, their actions had been discovered and restrained by the Umbrella Corporation. After packing their bags, they had to live at the Umbrella headquarters from then on. The sisters discussed their situation at home, feeling as if the whole world was deceiving them. They decided to abandon everything and run away. However, they couldn't get far before being discovered by the Umbrella Guards. 
Perhaps because of the agitation, the virus in Billy's body erupted again, holding off the guards and allowing Jade to escape into a nearby box. Unfortunately, the fact that she was infected with the virus was finally exposed. When Evelyn learned that Billy was infected with the T-virus but hadn't turned into a terrifying monster, she held her excitement and claimed that she could cure Billy's illness. In fact, this was also Billy's wish, and she agreed to cooperate with the treatment. In reality, the so-called treatment was just a pretext. Evelyn's true goal was to find a way to counter the T-virus. Unexpectedly, after a series of tests and drug experiments, Billy suddenly began to convulse violently. She then transformed, jabbing a needle into the eye of a lab technician and showing immense hatred towards Evelyn. At that moment, Billy felt dizzy and started to see hallucinations, indicating the onset of her transformation into a zombie. Fortunately, a man appeared in time to snap her out of it. The conscious Billy was curious about the man, who looked just like her father, Albert. After some communication, she learned that he was Albert's second clone. Previously, he had been imprisoned in Umbrella's isolation chamber. It turns out, when Evelyn and Albert No. 1 had a falling out, Albert No. 2 was reactivated for use. His new research project was even more dangerous. Humans infected with the T-virus. Although he verbally agreed, Albert No. 2 did not want to betray Billy. After learning her identity, he believed she should save her father. However, when she arrived at the room where her father was imprisoned, she found Jade there as well. It turned out that after escaping from the Umbrella Guards, Jade had sought help from her hacker friend Simon to save Billy. Simon was actually Evelyn's biological son. Upon learning of Umbrella's various crimes, he agreed to Jade's request. Using his hacking skills and privileged access, he easily infiltrated the Umbrella Corporation. Coincidentally, Billy stumbled upon the room of her father, Albert No. 1, and the family was unexpectedly reunited there. With no time for pleasantries, they prepared to leave immediately. However, the company's alarm suddenly sounded. Evelyn had arrived with guards. Perhaps due to excessive tension, Billy once again entered a frenzied state and uncontrollably bit Simon. Only after tasting blood did she return to normal. By then, Evelyn had already arrived with the guards. Seeing her son bitten by Billy, she raised her pistol and pulled the trigger without hesitation. With great effort, they managed to pull everyone away and hid in a chemical lab. Albert No. 1 had already devised a plan. After dousing the floor with flammable liquid, he told Albert No. 2 to take everyone and leave, while he stayed behind to cover their escape. Not long after they left, Evelyn arrived at the lab. Albert immediately ignited the floor, turning the entire lab into a sea of flames. At this point, the two sisters had successfully escaped from the Umbrella Corporation, and under the protection of Albert No. 2, they headed towards their next destination. Jade opened the note her father had given her, which listed a contact, Ada Wong, located in Japan. Surprisingly, Evelyn had not died in the explosion. As firefighters tried to save her, the arm of a T-virus-infected individual suddenly emerged. Back to the present, the adult Billy operated a drone, firing at the zombies, and eventually annihilating them all. However, the ground began to tremble violently. A giant crocodile emerged from the sea. Desperate, Billy wondered how she could deal with such a massive monster. Fortunately, she maneuvered the drone above the crocodile. Although it crashed soon after, Billy bought her some time. She threw a grenade, blasting the crocodile back into the sea. After that, she sprinted towards a nearby helicopter and managed to take off before the crocodile caught up. Unbeknownst to her, Jade's daughter was nearby. Following her mother's advice, the girl had left the cargo ship in a speedboat and arrived at the coastline. Coincidentally, she encountered the giant crocodile, which surprisingly showed no aggression towards her. Instead, it stared at her with a sense of familiarity. Sarah even reached out to touch it, but at that moment, Billy returned in the helicopter. Two high-powered missiles struck the crocodile, killing it instantly, while Sarah was unharmed. She ran a short distance and reunited with her mother Jade. It turned out that not long before, Jade had been unable to find her daughter in the ship's cabin. Discovering the missing escape kit, she immediately guessed Sarah had gone ashore and went to find her. Mother and daughter reunited, but before they could exchange pleasantries, Billy appeared with guards. Having witnessed Sarah's interaction with the crocodile, she believed Sarah had unique abilities that warranted further study in the lab. Enraged, Jay called Billy a monster. Unfazed, Billy laughed and only wanted to complete her mission and atone for her past mistakes. Billy suddenly raised her gun and pulled the trigger. Although Jade was not killed on the spot, 
she lost her ability to resist and helplessly watched her daughter being taken away, believing that the little girl held the key to the virus. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.